Hey students, in this video, we're going to go ahead and start unit four. So before we start the notes of unit four, uh, please open your notebook and make that bookmark for unit four. So fold, fold that corner in your notebook and title it unit four quadratics. So pause the video if you need to, but let's go ahead and get started on the notes. So the first part of unit four is just kind of reviewing the attributes of quadratic functions again. Um, and we kind of reviewed these last unit with absolute value functions. So very similar. We have vertex going on here in the parabola. Um, you have to identify it as minimum or maximum value. And the vertex is labeled as two variables of X and Y. So we identify them as H and K. Um, the axis of symmetry is also that line that goes through the middle and cuts the parabola in half. So it's finding the symmetry from one point to another. Um, the x-intercepts, as we know, they are on the x-axis, so wherever those points are. And then the y-intercept on the y-axis, wherever that point is. The domain of the range, similar to what we talked about in in. Uh, absolute value functions, we are going to write them in interval notation with minimum, comma, maximum. Um, and then it could be all real numbers as well. But this is me telling you in the notes that in quadratics, the domain will always be all real numbers. Um, unless you have points at the end, there will always be arrows considered and that you will always have a domain of all real numbers, just like you did with absolute value. Um, for the range, though, you will have a U-shape that either opens up or down. Um, so you have to either put it as an interval notation that looks like this, where it is touching a number going to infinity. This right away tells you that it's opening up. You can also write it as Y is greater than a certain number. If it opens down, you're just going to write that Y is less than that certain number. Or the notation, the interval notation, will be negative infinity up to that number. So this is um, the notes for quadratics that will always apply for domain and range. So let's do a couple of examples. I'm going to go over the two examples on the left side. And um, I want you to try to do the two examples on the right side. And then pause the video and then quickly uh, watch the answers to these two. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. On this first example, this graph is showing that the vertex is going to be at this point right here. So that will be an order pair of two comma one. Two to the right, one up. So we're gonna have vertex two one. The axis of symmetry for this will be the line that cuts it in half. So we're gonna draw a vertical line right here which is showing that it is going through the x value at 2. So you're going to write x equals 2. The x-intercepts are looking to be touching at positive 3 and positive 1. So we're going to write those as our x-intercepts, 1, 0, 3, 0. And then when we look at the vertex, we need to identify it as minimum or maximum. So because if you're looking at this as going up, 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 and then down, this will be technically your highest value. So one is the highest value. That is your maximum. So we're going to say maximum is at one. Or you can actually just rewrite it as y equals one. So if you put the axis of symmetry together and the minimum or maximum together, they create that vertex. So that's a way to recall how each one of these can help you. Um, for the y-intercept, we have the negative 3 being touched on the y-axis. So we're going to write 0, negative 3. For the domain and range, as mentioned on the previous page in the front, we are going to look at it as arrows at the end. So this is going down forever, but also left and right forever. So we're going to write negative infinity positive infinity with parentheses on the sides, and then also our R for all real numbers. For range, this again has a maximum, so that means it has to be below that number. So we can say Y is less than or equal to 
1. And then as far as the interval notation, we're going to write minimum first, then maximum. So our minimum will be down here, which is negative infinity. And then our maximum is 1. So it's touching 1. So we write that bracket. And then parentheses at negative infinity. Okay, so that's the attributes for the first example. Let's try the next one. Here, it's not given to you. You got to graph it yourself. So we talked about doing the points by hand um, by just thinking of random x values like 0, 0 plus 3. 0 plus 3 will be just 3. If you square that, 3 square is 9. 9 minus 4, 9 minus 4 is 5. So y equals 5 when x is 0. So it's 0, 5. And you could do this to get more points, or you could just grab your calculator if you have one available and graph this um, quadratic equation. And go to the table. So we're going to go to parentheses x plus 3 squared minus 4. And when we graph this, we can then go to control T, the letter T. So there's our table. And 0, 5 is right there. Woohoo, we got it right. And then now we can keep going. You can look for your vertex on the table by looking for um, a y value that kind of replicates symmetrical numbers. So like right here, that negative 4. Above that is negative 3, below that is negative 3. Above that is 0, below that is 0. So we can say that negative 3, 4 is that vertex. Um, we can also identify the vertex just by looking at this graph, but that's another topic. Um, all right, so let's use that point of negative 4, 3. Negative 4, negative 3. And then negative 5, 0. And then negative 3, negative 4. And then negative 2, negative 3. And negative 1, 0. So let's just plot these points. So at 0, 5, and way up here, um, negative 5, 0, negative 4, negative 3. Negative 3, negative 4, negative 2, negative 3, negative 1, 0. Okay, so here's the parabola. Something like that. And then our vertex is this point right here. So we're going to say it's negative 3, negative 4. And then the axis of symmetry goes through that vertex. So we're going to say that it's at negative 3 when x equals negative 3. The minimum is the lowest that this goes. So we're going to say it's that negative 4. y is negative 4. So once again, that axis of symmetry and the minimum together form that vertex. x-intercepts, we're looking at it touching a negative 5 and negative 1. So we're going to raise, we're going to write negative 5, 0 and negative 1, 0. Y intercept, we said that it was going to be way up here at um, 0, 5. And then, by the way, if your calculator is not showing you those numbers like accurately, you can always remove the table, control T. And then go to menu and trace. If you go to trace, graph trace, you can go left and right, and then it label, labels them for you. So y intercept is 0, 5. If you go to the left, it tells you right here that the 0, which is your x intercepts, these are zeros. Um, those are also right there, negative 1, 0. If you keep going left, it also tells you your minimum which is right there. So you just have to interpret that the minimum is that vertex. And then if you keep going left, there's the other zero at negative five zero. So if you want to add it to your notes in the front, the x-intercept 
will be also seen as the zero on the graph. And then the vertex will be seen as the minimum or maximum on the graph in the calculator. Okay, so for the domain on this, we have arrows at the end. So we said domain will going left and right forever. So that's negative infinity, positive infinity. Um, for the range, the lowest we go is negative four. So we're gonna go y is greater or equal to negative four. Oh, sorry, this is still domain over here. Y is greater or equal to negative four. Um, the other notation that we had for interval notation is the lowest, which is the minimum of negative four, then the maximum of infinity, bracket for negative four, parentheses for infinity, and then the R for all real numbers on domain. I know I'm going back and forth, but again, just look at the first example or rewatch this explanation, but domain left and right goes on forever, range up and down, it stops at negative four and it goes on forever up here. Okay, so try these practice problems, pause the video and press play after when you're ready and you can see the answers for these two. All right, so the answers you should have gotten for these, for the vertex is two negative one. The axis of symmetry goes through it at two, so x equals two. This is a minimum at y equals negative one. And these two together form that vertex. X-intercept, we have a one and a three being touched. So we're gonna write one, zero, and three, zero. Y-intercept, we have that three. So we're gonna write it as zero comma three. For domain and range, um, domain will be negative infinity to positive infinity because it's going left and right forever. R for all real numbers. Range, it's up and down. So the lowest it goes is negative one. So we're looking at y values that are greater or equal to negative one because we're looking at higher values. And then since this is similar to the one we had down here, which is opening up, we're gonna write also this notation. So negative one with the bracket and then infinity, positive infinity on the right side. Okay, so for the next one, again, pause the video if you're not ready. Okay, so for this one, you should have filled in the points and I'm just going to graph that real quick and show you. Just give me a minute to type that real quick. So negative two, parentheses, x plus one, squared. And I'm just gonna trace this one. Oh, I guess it deleted it. Let me try it again. Menu, trace, graph trace. Okay, so on this one, it has a maximum of negative, negative one, zero. Um, so right here at negative one, zero, that's my maximum. So I will say maximum y equals zero. Uh, vertex, it's at negative one, zero. If I go to the right, it has zero two as my zero negative two as my y intercept. So I'm going to graph it right here. I know the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex, so they're going to be a symmetrical point on this side, and that's negative two negative two. And then I can keep looking for another point. can say one, yep, add one, negative eight. So 
Negative one, negative eight. There's another one right here. And if I follow the axis of symmetry, that means that on this side, there'll be another one two spaces away from it. So this is one, negative eight. This is negative three, negative eight. I'm going to just trace that. And my x-intercepts are pretty much the same point of the vertex, so I'm going to just write it as negative 1, 0. Axis of symmetry is touching at negative 1, so x equals negative 1. For domain, we're going to stick to saying the same thing, negative infinity to positive infinity, or all real numbers. For range, the highest it goes is the x-axis, so we just got to say, just like right here, our maximum was y equals 0, so that we got to say y is less than or equal to 0. Or we're going to rewrite it with interval notations where negative infinity and 0 are your minimum max. And then bracket and parentheses where they go. I forgot to circle minimum and maximums here, but as you can see, the lowest is the minimum. The highest is the maximum. And the lowest is the minimum. Okay, I hope this video helps.